We have talked about hereditary angioedema before. Today, it's a quick review, quick summary of hereditary angioedema. This will be a very fast video. If you find something that you don't understand, please go to my previous videos. Go to Medicosis Perfectionalis and then my playlist. The playlist is called Bleeding and Coagulation. With that being said, now let's get started. First, you know the intrinsic coagulation pathway. Here we have high molecular weight kinogen. By calicrin, it, it's converted into bradykinin. High molecular weight kinogen activates factor 12 and factor 11 of the intrinsic pathway. Calicrin only activates factor 12. Here's the same thing here, high molecular weight kinogen, thanks to calicrin, bradykinin. Calicrin also activates factor 12. Factor 12A activates precalicrin into calicrin, which activates factor 12, which activates precalicrin into calicrin. This is called a positive feedback loop. What happens when high molecular weight kinogen is converted into bradykinin thanks to plasma calicrin? You have contraction of non-vascular smooth muscles such as your bronchial, bronchioles and your bronchi, increased vessel permeability due to pus and angioedema, increased pain due to inflammation, increased vasodilation, natriuresis and vasodilation will lead to hypotension. That's why we call this the calicrin kinin system. Calicrin and kinin of the bradykinin. And bradykinin will do all of this crazy stuff. Bradykinin in the plasma. Calidin in the tissue. High molecular weight kinogen in the plasma. Low molecular weight kinogen in the tissue. If calicrin helps high molecular weight kinogen be converted into bradykinin, ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme, prevents this step. And even if you successfully produce some bradykinin, it's gonna take them to the cleaner, converting them into ugly, dirty, useless metabolites. That's why we call the ACE a kininase because it gets rid of the kinin. ACE inhibitors are gonna inhibit ACE. No kidding. ACE is involved in the formation or no formation of bradykinin. And ACE is also involved in the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. When you're taking ACE inhibitors, there is no ACE. When there is no ACE, there is lots of bradykinin leading to a dry cough due to bronchoconstriction, leading to angioedema due to increased vessel permeability as well as hypotension. When you block the ACE here, you have no angiotensin. Two, and then you have no hypertension. In fact, you have hypotension. That's why ACE inhibitors are one of the greatest anti-hypertensive medications. You can have problems with the GFR if you are on ACE inhibitors. Aldosterone is not going to be there, leading to natriuresis, hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis. We have talked about side effects of ACE inhibitors. Now the side effects of angiotensin receptor blockers. Angiotensin receptor blocker just block the receptor, the AT1 receptor of angiotensin 2, but they do not touch the ACE enzyme. So bradykinin is not gonna be high. This is wrong, it's not gonna be high. Okay, so you don't have symptoms of bradykinin. Okay, great. But you still have these symptoms. You still have hypotension. You still have naturesis, hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, some orthostatic hypotension and dizziness, but you don't get dry cough and you do not get angioedema. If you are a visual learner like myself, here is a great slide for bradykinin effects. Bronchoconstriction, hypotension, and angioedema. See the swelling of the lips, swelling of the eyelids, and laryngeal edema. Urticaria and angioedema classification, we have many different subtypes. There is the allergic or the hypersensitivity type of angioedema, but this is not what we're talking about when we're talking about hereditary angioedema. Hereditary angioedema is here. It's complement-related and kinin-mediated angioedema. It's not allergic. It's not a hypersensitivity reaction. Aquagenic urticaria is here. Do you remember aquagenic pruritus or aquagenic itching? Yes, indeed. This was the great polycythemia vera, one of the myeloproliferative neoplasms. Hereditary angioedema is an autosomal dominant disease. Translation, you have two copies of genes. One of them are mutant and the other one is normal on the pair of chromosomes. You have a 50-50 probability of passing the disease to your children. So 50 of them will be affected with hereditary angioedema. The other 50% will be normal. Hereditary angioedema is an autosomal dominant disorder where there is deficiency of C1 estrase inhibitor most of the time. Normally, the C1 estrase inhibitor inhibits calicrin. When you inhibit calicrin, you do not have bradykinin, which is good because bradykinin is pro-inflammatory and under normal condition, I don't need inflammation, so that's cool. 
However, in hereditary angioedema, you don't have the C1 stress inhibitor. Calicrin is left uninhibited. Bradykinin is high in the sky. And this will lead to all of the crazy butt stuff caused by bradykinin, such as dry cough, angioedema, hypotension, natriuresis, etc. 50 hematology cases for a limited number of people are available on patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Don't miss out. Hereditary angioedema, genetic disorder, decreased C1 stress inhibitor, increased colocrine, increased bradykinin. It's not increased colocrine, it's just, it's not inhibited. Increased bradykinin, leading to all of the stuff, dry cough, hypotension, angioedema, which is an emergency. My bradykinin mnemonic, everything here is B or P. Three types of hereditary angioedema. Type 1, there is deficiency of C1 inhibitor, decrease in number. So, type 1, none. Type 2, the number is, is kind of okay, but we have decreased function. So in type 2, C1 inhibitor is too weak. Type 3, Roman numerals 12, and these are three digits. So in type 3, C1 inhibitor is normal in number and function. However, factor 12 has gone crazy. Functions of C1 inhibitor under normal condition inactivates colicrin, which produces bradykinin. We know that inactivates C1 trace enzyme, which cleaves C2 and C4 components or proteins of the classical pathway complement. Okay, it inhibits factor 12A in the intrinsic pathway. The complement system. We call it complement because it complements the job of the antibody. We have three pathways, classical, alternative, and lectin. In hereditary angioedema, it's the classical pathway that's involved. An antigen-antibody complex will pull the trigger and start the complement cascade until we end with the MAG. The membrane attack complex and the MAG will attack. Here's the classical pathway. Antigen-antibody complex will pull the trigger, converting C1 into the active C1 thanks to C1 estrase. Then we have C4 and C2 into C42 and C4A. C3 convertase will convert the C3 into C3 and C3B. C3B together with these three convertase will form C5 convertase, which will convert the C5 into C5A and C5B. C5B together with C6, 7, 8, and 9 will form the MAC, which will attack. The problem in hereditary angioedema is that there is no bacteria. The body is literally attacking itself, which is weird. That's why it's a disease. It's a pathology. Pathology is the scientific study of people gone weird. In hereditary angioedema, you have a deficiency of the C1 estrase inhibitor. If you have a deficiency of the inhibitor, C1 estrase is left uninhibited, activating the complement, activating the complement, activating the complement until you destroy yourself, metaphorically speaking. So when you don't have the inhibitor, you have C1 estrase overactivated, left uninhibited, C4 and C2 are consumed, and the MAC is overactivated. That's why we call it complement-related kinin-mediated angioedema. Clinically, hereditary angioedema has positive family history, has increased bradykinin to increased vessel permeability, leading to recurrent attacks of angioedema, which is swelling in the face, neck, extremities, eyelid, lips, and laryngeal edema. Recurrent attack, the attack lasts between two to three days, okay, and then they resolve in one to two days, okay, but they may resolve or you may die from asphyxia, okay, recurrent attack of abdominal pain because bradykinin pain and you can have swelling in the genitalia as well, the patient is usually young because it's a genetic problem, no urticaria, no pitting, no itching because this is not an allergy, the recurrent episodes, as you know, and the abdominal pain can mimic pancreatitis. Sometimes surgeons are fooled. In many instances, there is a trigger that triggers the symptoms of hereditary angioedema, and sometimes there is a prodrome between the trigger and the symptoms. These are the triggers. Please don't forget dental procedures. Diagnosis, you need the family history and you need the clinical picture of triggers, prodromal symptoms, and the clinical features. Okay, now let's go to the lab. How about C1? C1 level is normal. C1 function is normal. C1 and C1Q. Okay, C2 and C4 are consumed. C1 inhibitor is low. That's the definition of hereditary angioedema. Bradykinin is high. That's what's causing the angioedema and all of the crazy symptoms. Precolicrin is low because all of the precolicrin has been converted into colicrin. High molecular weight conjugation is low because all of the high molecular weight conjugation has been converted into bradykinin. IgA and eosinophils are normal because this is not an allergy. This is bradykinin. This is not histamine. How to treat this hereditary angioedema? This is not an allergy. Don't give antihistamine, steroids, or epinephrine. It's bradykinin, it's not histamine. 
ACE inhibitors are contraindicated because they will increase bradykine. During the acute attack, you should infuse the C1 inhibitor. You can use Icatabant, which is a bradykine receptor blocker, or Ecalantide, which is a colicrine inhibitor. Okay, prevention of future attacks, Danazole, C1 inhibitor infusion, and fresh frozen plasma. Fresh frozen plasma is better used in the prophylaxis than rather than the acute attacks. It's not that good. What if I have a patient during the acute attack and I don't have all of this stuff because in a very poor hospital? Give FFP. Give racemic epinephrine. I don't have any of this. Intubate. So here's a mnemonic for the treatment during acute attack. I can't to band. I can't to band. I'm a bradykinin receptor blocker. Ban bradykinin and bradykinin receptor 2. T for 2. Ecalantide is a calicrin inhibitor. And here is everything you need to know about hereditary androdema in just one slide, which is awesome. Thomas Edison said, Genius is 1% inspirational and 99% taking good notes. Another mnemonic for hereditary androdema. Here are some questions for you. Let me know the answer in the comments. And the answers are available on Patreon in an amazing slide just on Patreon. If this video has helped you, please support this channel on Patreon. I need your support, guys, please, so that I can upload more than 10 videos every week. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe and hit the bell. Smash like. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram. Get all of my notes, all of my cases by going to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. And I'll send you my bloody Dropbox links. Thank you, guys. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard.